apart from Ahimsa, how else do you see um, your practice specifically addressing some of the other yamas and niyamas? Um, well, truthfulness. I mean, the yamas are ahimsa, satya, ashteya, brahmacharya, aparigraha. Um, satya means to tell the truth. And as we know, it's quite normal t uh, in the world today not to say what you mean um, or to mean what you say. And so that's an emphasis in Jyamukta Yoga to purify one's speech and to not speak unless you really feel impassioned about what you're saying. Um, that, that changes a lot in someone's life when they think about saying something before they say it. <laughs> and we, we feel that to see the picture of the happy cow uh, emblazoned in a label on the cadaver in the butcher shop is not truth-telling. Mm. It's deceitful. It's double talk, and I think that's part and parcel of what needs to happen in the world, truth-telling. Yeah. Also, I mean, there's so many aspects where satya um, comes into play and, and relevance to how we're treating animals. I mean, I've discovered that so many yoga students, when they come to a yoga class or to an immersion or a teacher training or a workshop, they find speaking in public or singing in public very difficult. Um, they feel inhibited, they feel shy, um, and it's almost like they're being strangled. And I feel that that comes from the fact that we do that with animals. We don't listen to what they're saying. In fact, most domesticated animals don't talk much when they're in the presence of, of adults. Wild animals, on the other hand, if you've ever had any um, experience with wild animals, they're talking all the time in their own languages. But through the process of domestication, which is uh, a soft way of, of describing slavery, um, the voice is, is, is pushed back. Um, a slave suppresses their voice. And I think that if we um, participate in that kind of, in that uh, practice of slavery, then we have problems speaking ourselves and speaking our truth and just feeling comfortable with our own voice. Um, Ashteya is another one of the yamas, it means non-stealing. And that's directly related to meat eating because, and dairy products, because we have to steal we have to steal from those animals. We steal their milk, we steal their eggs, we steal their lives, we steal their, um, steal their babies. babies. Um, most animals that are raised for food don't even get to see the sunshine. I mean, that's stolen from them. The right to choose their friends, to have sex with who they want, that is not a choice for an animal raised for food. Um, all of those rights are taken away from them. Um, brahmacharya, that's another yama, and that means not to abuse others sexually. Well, all animals that are raised for food or, you know, fur or wool or whatever other exploitive means are manipulated sexually. They're raped, um, they're abused, you know, it's not a it, it, it's not a nice way to relate to, to others that we share this world with. And Patanjali says that if you practice brahmacharya, meaning if you, if you don't abuse others sexually, then what you should see happening in your own life is vitality. You will, have, you will enjoy good health. Um, your face will glow. You will... Uh, look younger than you are. It, it, you will. Uh, you will not be. Um, you will not be sick. We, our term in English for this uh, this way of treating animals is an called animal husbandry. I call that a bad husband. Time for a divorce. <laughs> yeah. And the last yama is a parigraha. A parigraha, a parigraha means greedlessness, 
and in our culture as as I think all, any of us can uh, agree um, we're encouraged to be greedy we're encouraged to take more than what we need and um, that what that does to us as individuals is it makes us feel dependent upon things for a sense of self-worth um, we lose our self-confidence um, we feel we have to have a lot of stuff to make us feel attractive to others and um, like I said our self-worth is based on how much money we have in the bank or how many cars we have or how big our houses are what kind of how many designer labels we have in the closet that, that kind of stuff you know and um, yoga helps us to be mm. to be free of that and to to emerge from that kind of um, mind trip um, the whole, self esteem. The whole financial system is based on uh, this possession of others, possession of animals. Even terms like capital. Capital means the head of the cow. Or we have terms like the stock market. Uh, originally a, a person's wealth was was gauged by the number of animals they controlled the lives of and we retain that still inside of us this idea that if we could control the life of another take that life away whenever we felt like it that then we would truly have wealth you know we started to teach yoga because we felt it could provide us with a platform to speak out for animal rights and we feel like this is the the next the most important thing to address as human beings um, in the past we have come to terms with racism and uh, all the isms uh, that, um, uh, the way that we've treated animals the way that we've treated um, people of color the way that we've treated people that don't have the same religion, um, the way that men have treated women. Those things have been questioned. But what hasn't been questioned is how human beings are treating animals. And that's called speciesism. And so we feel that the, the next biggest shift of consciousness is addressing that, mm. that ism, that separates us off from the rest of, uh, of life, other earthlings who share this planet with. It's, it's not a new idea, it's an ancient idea, but it's an ancient idea that the future of the world is hinged upon, we mm -hmm. feel. It is an essential idea that needs to be embodied in the world.